Okay, so in this video, we will discuss Newton's quotient and look at examples for different functions f. Now here's Newton's quotient. Here, there are two variables, x and h. They are independent variables, and given a function f, this is how Newton's quotient is defined. Simply f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. This may not look like much right now, but when we discuss in, later in this course the idea of the derivative of a function, this will be extremely important. And there will be two steps in the process. The first will be to compute and simplify Newton's quotient, and then we are going to let the variable h approach zero. So we'll let h shrink to zero. Let's look at a few examples of how to compute and simplify Newton's quotient, and then we'll see what happens to our simplified answer, what happens to it as h is allowed to shrink to zero. So let's start very simply with a linear function. So f of x is equal to 8x minus 3. As we already have f of x being 8x minus 3, you can compute f of x plus h, and then you'll have everything in this fraction. Then you can plug it in and simplify it. So well, what is f of x plus h? Well, we are now replacing the old argument that was x by a new argument that is x plus h. So replace everywhere in here x by x plus h. So 8 times, be careful to open your parentheses here because x is multiplied by 8, so all of x plus h must be multiplied by 8. Minus 3 stays minus 3. If you multiply out, we'll get 8x plus 8h minus 3. So now we can compute Newton's quotient. I'll write simply n q. I'm lazy here. Instead of rewriting f of x plus h minus f of x over h, n q Newton's quotient, which is this. So what do we have? f of x plus h is right here. So 8x plus 8h minus 3 minus, and here be careful, all of f of x is negated. So open your parentheses and f of x is 8x minus 3. And all of this is over h. Well, let's simplify our numerator and see if we can cancel the over h. So 8x plus 8h minus 3 minus 8x. Negative negative 3 is positive 3 over h. 8x minus itself gives 0. Negative 3 plus 3 is 0. And so we're left with a single term on the numerator, 8 times h over h. But h over h cancels as 1, and we are left with 8. So for the function 8x minus 3, Newton's quotient simplifies to be 8. And this is just a glimpse of how this will be used later on. But if you notice, f of x was a linear function. It was simply a line y equals 8x minus 3. And the slope of the line was 8. And Newton's quotient returned the slope of the line. This is not an accident. And this is how you will use this idea to obtain the slope of any given function. And this will be called the derivative. Here the h disappeared. Let's look at one example where the h will not go away entirely. Let's now take, say, a quadratic function. So let's go with x squared minus 5x minus 1. So again, the only missing expression is f of x plus h. So let's compute f of x plus h, simplify. 
So now we are replacing the old argument that was x by x plus h. So replace everywhere x by x plus h. So it used to be x squared. It is now x plus h, all squared, minus 5 times x. But now we are replacing all of x by x plus h. And of course, minus 1. And as I've said a few seconds ago, before we plug this in back to Milton's quotient, we'll simplify first and then we'll plug it in. If we square this, we'll get x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus 5x minus 5h minus 1. There are no terms to regroup. This is as good as it's going to be. So now let's substitute and simplify. So we have our Newton's quotient, which is f of x plus h. Let's rewrite this. So here's f of x plus h minus all of f of x, right? So you have to negate the entire expression, and here I'll do it right away. So we'll have negative x squared. If you negate negative 5x, it becomes positive 5x. And if you negate negative 1, it becomes positive 1. And this is all over, of course, h. Well, let's see how the numerator simplifies, if it does x squared minus x squared cancels to 0. Negative 5x positive 5x cancels to 0. Negative 1 positive 1 cancels to 0. And we're left with simply three terms. 2xh plus h squared minus 5h all over h. But we can do better. If you notice, every term on the numerator is a multiple of h. So we can factor h, and now we're going to get 2x. I'll write this term first, minus 5. And if you take h away from h squared, you're left with plus h over h. But h over h cancels to be 1, and we are left with 2x minus 5 plus h. This is the simplified Newton's quotient for this quadratic polynomial. Let's do just one extra step, and you'll see this later. Once we have Newton's quotient to find the slope of a function, we are going to let h go to 0. And so we usually write h with a little arrow, 0, to say we're letting h shrink to 0. So if you look at this expression, well, as h shrinks to 0, the expression will end up being, so we'll go to 2x minus 5. This idea of letting variables shrink to 0 is what's called a limit, but we'll discuss this more rigorously very shortly. Let's do one more example of Newton's quotient. Now where the function is a rational function. This will be a little more interesting. So recall here Newton's quotient. f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h. f of x equals, let's take a simple but still interesting rational function. Let's take 2x plus 1 over 1 minus x. So as before, we already have f of x. We are missing f of x plus h. So let's compute f of x plus h. So we are replacing everywhere in here x by the new argument that is x plus h. So we have 2 times x plus h plus 1 over 
and again here be careful, 1 minus all of x is being negated, so you have to negate all of x plus h, which will give us on top 2x plus 2h plus 1 over 1 minus x minus h. So now we have f of x plus h, we have f of x, we can compute Newton's quotient. We'll do something different though than the previous problems. Because both f of x and f of x plus h are fractions, if we subtract and divide by h, we'll have this really large expression. So instead of dividing by h, we'll use the following idea. If you have an expression, in our case f of x plus h minus f of x, and you divide by h, you can instead multiply it by the reciprocal, 1 over h. And this will simplify the way the expression looks. So, f of x plus h, this lovely fraction, so 2x plus 2h plus 1 over 1 minus x minus h minus all of f of x and you can appreciate why this is when f is a rational function, a fraction, this is a good idea. If we keep it in this form, then we'd have all of this all over h would have this really big fraction. But now this will make the expression a little simpler and it will take at the same time less space. Okay, so here's Newton's quotient. Let's simplify it. Well, we have this difference of two fractions, but they have different denominators. The only way to simplify is to cross multiply, put them over a common denominator. So we'll do this times this minus this times this. So 2x plus 2h plus 1 times 1 minus x minus 1 minus x minus h times 2x plus 1. All over, of course, we're not done cross multiplying yet, this times this. So 1 minus x minus h times 1 minus x. And the whole thing is multiplied by 1 over h. Now here, don't multiply this. This is fully factored, this term times this term. There is nothing to gain from multiplying this out. Here though, on the numerator, we have a difference of two terms. This times this minus this times this. This is not fully factored. If we multiply out and subtract, we can hope for some cancellation. So let's do so. So all of this times 1 will give us 2x plus 2h plus 1 minus all of this times x. So minus 2x squared minus 2xh minus x. The first product minus, open your brackets here, because all of the product here is negated, so 1 times all of this, 2x plus 1, minus x times all of this, minus 2x squared, minus x, minus h times all of this, minus 2xh, minus h. And this is all over, one minus x minus h times one minus x, the whole thing times one over h. Let's see how much simplification there is. Let us first distribute our negative sign to all these terms. So negative 2x, negative 1, positive 2x squared, positive x, positive 2xh, positive h, all over 1 
minus x minus h times 1 minus x, the whole thing, times 1 over h. All right. So 2x minus 2x cancels to 0. 1 minus 1 cancels to 0. Negative 2x squared. Positive 2x squared cancels to 0. Negative x. Positive x cancels to 0. Anything else? Aha! Negative 2xh. Positive 2xh also cancels to 0. And we're left with only two terms. 2h plus h, which is 3h. So we have 3h over 1 minus x minus h times 1 minus x. And the whole thing, of course, don't leave behind your times 1 over h. And here's there's something interesting. h is a multiple of the numerator and denominator, so we can cancel. And we're left with a rather surprisingly simple rational function. 3 over 1 minus x minus h times 1 minus x. And this is a simplified form of Newton's quotient. Now it took a bit of work, but it's actually pretty nice. One last step, when we find a derivative, once we have for the given function the simplified Newton's quotient, we will then let h approach 0. So if h shrinks to 0, so as we let h shrink to 0, this goes away, and so the expression will become, well, 3 stays 3, over, this goes away, and so we have 1 minus x times 1 minus x, which of course simplifies as 1 minus x squared. And that's it. So always remember that when you want Newton's quotient, think of it as a two-step problem. Since you are given to begin with f of x, all you're missing is f of x plus h. So evaluate f of x plus h and simplify if possible. Then, once you have f of x plus h, plug back into Newton's quotient, and then simply simplify the best you can, Newton's quotient. And later on, we will see that once we have Newton's quotient, letting h shrink to 0 will give us what's called the derivative of the function. And all the derivative is, is, it's, is a fancy word for the slope of the function. And that's it.